life gives you lemon, go ahead and make lemonade. When I hear sales reps talk about the downturn in the economy right now, how difficult it is, this is what I think about. And there's absolutely a way that we can do so. On today's episode, my guest, Jeff Hazlett, is going to break down how you as a sales rep or leader can turn a downturn into an upturn. Get some money from that. You're going to love this episode. Hey, 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 everyone. Welcome to another great episode of the Sales Evangelist Podcast. I'm your host, Donald C. Kelly, the Sales Evangelist, and I'm so excited for another great episode. I'm so excited to be here with you today. And on this episode, we have the one and only Jeff Hazlett. Jeff is a primetime TV and radio host and a former Fortune 100 CMO. Jeff brings a wealth of knowledge. He brings a ton of insights, not only not only leading his own organization, but also selling as well. And you're going to find some of those insights very helpful for you as a sales rep or as a sales leader. If this is your first time listening to our podcast or watching one of our videos, please go ahead and subscribe. We'll notify you every time we drop a new episode. And I know you're going to love the content. We're going to give you things that's going to help you to build pipe and also ideas on how you can convert that pipeline. As we dive into this episode today, listen to some of the things that Jeff shares. I mean, listen to the historical idea behind downturns. It's not something new. We've been through them in the past. But how you navigate through these downturns are going to be detrimental towards your success as a seller. One thing I would ask you as well, if you find this episode beneficial, please share it with one other person and go ahead and connect with me on LinkedIn, Donald C. Kelly. Let's dive in and listen to what Jeff has to share. Jeffrey, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks very much for having me. I appreciate it. Of course, man. Somebody like your caliber brings a lot of great weight and insights, especially to this topic we're going to be covering today. I bragged about you a little bit in a teaser, but if you don't mind taking a second, tell us a little bit more about some of the stuff you're working on right now, Jeff. Well, right now I'm the chairman of the C-Suite Network and uh, host of my own show, All Business with Jeffrey Hazen on C-Suite Radio, C-Suite TV. Um, uh, and, our pod, and our podcast network have about uh, 450 podcasts now. Uh, somewhere around 50 million downloads and 72 TV shows, hundreds of books and, and t uh, thousands and thousands of members, over 350,000 members that are part of the C-Suite network have opted in. So listen, if y'all if y'all don't sit back and buckle up and listen to what Jeffrey has to share today, <laughs> you're going to miss out. Make sure as well to go check out the C-Suite network because loads of knowledge, loads of wisdom, and a plethora of things that can help you specifically as a sales professional or a sales leader or a business owner. Um, so, Jeff, I'm, I'm excited for this, man. And, and this is one of the reasons why I want to talk to you today, because it goes back to this notion right now. Everyone, you, you have two types of camps. You have salespeople who are saying there's no opportunities out there. And you have folks who are saying, yeah, it's tough, but there are opportunities out there. And then you got folks who are just in a different camp whose industry is just killing it no matter what. <laughs> um, I want to be able to learn and help some of our sellers who may not be thriving and the companies who are fighting, facing a tough time. How can they sell and thrive in a downturn? Um, what are some of those things that we could take away from? Is that cool if we were? Yeah, absolutely. You know, first to understand, you know, there's some tough times out there. There are times that we've gone through the last couple of years have been just yeah. absolutely terrible. But also during COVID, we saw some of the, you know, some businesses actually rise. And if we look at downturns in itself, I mean, we're, we've got an inflation rate of what, 10.5%. We've got about 150,000 doors that have closed uh, due to the pandemic between 2020 and 2021. Got an 80 percent, uh, you know, labor gap reported as facing a shortage of skilled workers, and we're seeing at some decrease in the economy as much as 39 percent revenue dip. But that doesn't mean that some of the businesses haven't come back. And during the greatest crises, we can see some really good things. Yeah. So for those people sitting there and saying, "Oh, it's all doom and gloom," let me just say one big word: bullshit. You know. Uh, there's a good opportunities for for many people out there if you want to do it. You know, a lot of it's mindset and looking for those opportunities. But first, you got to get your head straight. You know, if you don't get your head straight, you know, you're not going to you're not going to get into the game and you got to get into the game. Yeah. And I think that's a critical component there right there. You know, get get the head in the game, um, because, yeah, it, I, I feel like if there if if yeah things are going to be bad, but again, there's still opportunities. And if you are listening and you're watching and you're learning and growing, you learn to reiterate. You, le you learn to try to adapt and to go into it. So I, I want to go go back into this. Um, I want to go back into like this idea of uh, of just like some of the bad times that we've seen in the past 
Um, maybe and I know in our previous conversation, you highlighted this, like some of the bad experiences, the downturns and how companies thrive during those times and adapted. Um, would you be willing to entertain me on this for a little bit? Absolutely. I mean, and I love the word the adapt, you know, because I it's always been my key word since 2010. But adapt, change or die. The key is to be <laughs> relentless. The, those that really are going to do well have to be relentless. But let's take it back to the last big financial downturn. And that was a financial crisis of 2008. You know, back in the third quarter of 2007, I remember my CEO walking in. I was a Fortune 100 officer. It was five of us officers were sitting there in, you know, the big executive conference room. And he walks in and I thought he was so ashen that I actually thought he was having a heart attack. And I said, Frank, what's wrong? He says, man, it's going to be bad. I go, what do you mean it's going to be bad? He said, it's going to be really bad. And I will tell you, during that next year, we laid off 8,500 people and, you know, billions and billions of dollars we were affected by it. But the company survived, you know, it, it continued to, to at least, you know, continue to move forward, even though we were having some tough financial conditions. And by the way, I was at Eastman Kodak. And at that time, things were still plummeting and still going down. But there's opportunity. To, I mean, history teaches us. Let's go back, back, way back. Let's go back. A hundred years before that, to back to 1907, there was an economic crisis in 1907. You know who was born out of that? General Motors. There was a financial crisis in 1939. You know who was born out of that? Hewitt Packard. 1953, another crisis. Burger King was born. 1958, another crisis. Hyatt Hotels was born. 1973, the energy crisis. Many of you guys weren't even born then. I was there. I was 13 years old. You know who was born? Trader Joe's. 1975, right after that, you know who was born? Apple. 1980, CNN. 2002, let's go there. 2002, and who was born? MailChimp. So many of you are using MailChimp. You know, during the last economic crisis back in 2007, Dollar Tree grew by 60%. H&R Block grew by 26%. Walmart grew by 20%. Walmart, huge company. There are always winners and losers. Laskin Air, 17%. Hasbro, 17%. And then I want to get into and tell you some of the big companies that were growth, growth or growth areas. Children's goods, trucking, healthcare, grocers, restaurants, do it yourself, mm -hmm. financial advisors, cybersecurity, pet industry, tech support, debt collection accountants. I mean, there's always opportunities. And it birthed some great, great, big, huge companies, Square, Groupon, Venmo. That's what we saw in the last, last recession. But, and I can even tell you even more unicorns from there. I mean, listen, brother, you put the quarter in, you're going to go for a full ride here. <laughs> I got some more quarters, Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, think about it. I, listen, you, let's talk about unicorns from way back. Let's go, let's go back in 75. Let's go back to the yeah. energy crisis in 75. Microsoft, 1982, electronic arts. Yeah. 1990, another another bad time, a bad turn. iRobot was born. I mean, come on, iRobot. Now it's got Scoombas and Roombas and everything else that's out there. And then 2008, 2009, mm -hmm. 2010. Who was born? Airbnb was a unicorn that was born out of that. In fact, who would have thought that, you know, how many years ago, yeah. 2000, here we are, 20, 2023, way back, 2008, someone would sit naked on your couch and you, you would let them pay money to sit there, right? I mean, that's what it is. Boom. Airbnb, Slack, 2009. <laughs> what, WhatsApp, 2009. Square, 2009. Uber, 2000, Uber, 2009. Instagram, 2010. Pinterest, 2010. That's that's unicorns in some of the worst economic conditions we've ever seen yeah. in the history of business. And so for all you doom and gloomers, for all those people who are sitting out there saying, hey, it, it's not possible. Oh, it's too tough. Shut up and start selling. Shut up and start making something move. Find some white space. You know, 53 percent of your customers right now mm -hmm. would do more business with you if you ask. That's a fact. And so why don't you ask? say that one more time for the people in the back? 53%. Yeah. I mean, that's a majority of your customers right there that would do more business. I mean, and we know that's good business because you don't have to, you don't have the acquisition cost because you've already, you've already had the acquisition cost. So, you know, here's the thing. So I like this idea, this thinking of going along this line of uh, looking at where, where the white spaces are, what else can I do? This customer idea is a great path. 
anything else I can do as an individual contributor working in a company that may be, you know, have, so I'm changing my mindset. I'm looking at my current customer. How do I approach those customers? What are some of the best ways that I do that? Um, any ideas to fresh up the way that my products or services, I'm, I'm just trying to see what are some of the things you coach and tell your teams? Well, first of all, bad times are always inevitable, right? Losing clients, always inevitable. Losing business, always inevitable. You're always going to have somebody who's unhappy. The whites aren't white enough. The stripes aren't striped enough. The blacks aren't black enough. You know, I used to be a printer and I would say that that was the case all the time. Somebody was always complaining about <laughs> something, you know, no matter what you do, no matter how you do it. So first of all, that's always going to be there. You know, again, get over it. The, the second thing you have to have, and I think this is really, really important for any mm -hmm. business that's looking forward, you know, and, and looking to grow, Donald, is you got to have team alignment. That you got to get everybody on board. They got to drink. They got to be drinking the Kool Aid. You know, they got to be drinking the champagne. Get on the wagon, whatever you want to call it, because you got to have team mm -hmm. alignment. That this is where we're going, and we're going to get do, done. We're going to do this. And if you don't, get rid of those people. I mean, flat, get them out of the company because it's important. Third thing, you got to get the mood going right because mood is everything. If everybody thinks your best days are behind them, guess what? Your best days are behind you. There's not much you can do to change that. So you've got to get them into the right kind of cadence and mood of what you want to do and where you want to go. And then last but not least, you got to communicate. I mean, that's important. You got to sit down and communicate the plan of where everything you're going. Now, there's probably some specific things that I can give you in terms of, you know, outlining a couple of things like, you know, the money, honey, let's focus on that. Sure. You got to have cash. And so to do that, you need to trim your sales. Start going through everything you can cut that you can cut. Go ahead. You know, you should be doing that anyway. Even in good times, you should be going through just kind of like they tell you, you should go through all your subscriptions personally. See if you're double paying on Apple Pay or do uh, double paying on your Apple subscriptions, whatever it might be. The other thing you might want to look at is some, you know, look at mergers or look at compliments. Where might you be able to pick up another business or, you know, an, a competitor? that you can bring in that might not be doing too well, but you can give them a parachute and pick up that extra business and trim out some of the things you won't need in terms of accounting staff and some of the other things, but pick up that customers. Think about X as a service. That's another one. I love this one. I was sitting around one time thinking about, oh my gosh, I'm going to grow my business. I got to do this. I got to hire all these people and do all this. Where am I going to get the cash? And I'm thinking I'm beating my head up against the wall. And finally, one of my good friends, Dan Burris, who's a futurist, he said, X is a service. And I said, Dan, what the hell do you mean? X is a service. He goes, you don't, why do you have to do it? <laughs> You know, I said, he goes, why do you have to do it? I go, what do you mean? He goes, you can hire it done. You can partner with them. You could, you can have them do it. Just put your name on it. All these different things. And that, wow. And that, that was a brilliant kind of thing. So think about how you could partner with somebody in, in some way, but you offer the service. We do that at C-suite. We go and find the best and the brightest. We go and find the best kinds of things we can do. We put, we, you know, we have white label, we pull it together because we want to offer that, but it's a great way to be able to do it. So let's go find those that do it best and do it. And then you should look at what I call base hits versus home runs. We're always trying to hit those home runs. You got salespeople out there trying to land the million dollar account, $2 million account, $3 million. Go get a $25,000 account inside a major corporation. And I guarantee you, you land that five or $25,000 big enterprise client at the beginning, that that will build over time. And by the time that you would have sold that big million dollar or big enterprise client, you will have done a lot more business in that company during that time period to pay for itself. And you'll be upwards towards that fee anyway, by the time you really close the big one. And then last but not least, I'll tell you, you should be networking. You should be getting out there, you know, and they said in, in good times advertise and bad times advertise more. So in bad times, get out there and shake the trees, be going through your LinkedIn, <laughs> be going through everything, right? And do as much as you possibly can. That's what you want to be doing. I love love all of these. Love them, love them, love them. Absolutely love it. I, I especially the last one here. You're talking about, uh, you know, connecting. Uh, there's one philosophy that I tell sales professionals all the time. I see people collect LinkedIn connections like they're Pokemon cards. And like, why are you collecting them? He's like, got to catch them all. It's like you need to make sure you know the people and that you're actually engaging with those people. That you right. you have something that you're getting. You, 
I, I can't just come to you, Jeff, when I need something. I need to make sure that I have an ongoing relationship. And sometimes people think that I need to go to networking events. No, not necessarily go to networking events, but your LinkedIn connection. Hang out in a place where your ideal customers are and leverage your connection. People are willing to help you. The other one that I really think is, is interesting, go back to what you said, is cutting the fat. Um, sometimes yeah. we get those bloated sales stat, tech stacks, like you're saying, too many softwares, too many techs that gets in the way of us selling. And then also the other one too is going for the right type of clients right now. You don't necessarily need to bring down a wildebeest right now. Perhaps I can eat enough little antelopes or perhaps eat some deers. I mean, some uh, before I can go for the bigger stuff or, you know, the elephants, so to speak. But I get the smaller things. And there are a lot of opportunities out there. And I really like what you said, go way back to the beginning when it comes to like the problems, um, the white noise. If I keep pushing the same value prop in the time before the pre-pandemic or before the tough economic times, I, and I'm pushing the same one right now, I probably am doing something wrong because the problems that those leaders are facing have probably totally changed and I need to adapt and change with them, identify what those individual, what those things are they're facing, have more conversations, go back to your network, you have some other clients, learn from what they're saying to some of the challenges you're facing and then use that and utilize tech like even chat GPT, which is you know, partially free right now to get Intel that can help you with your conversation. I mean, I, I just love this, I, I, man. If somebody listening to this episode ain't trying this stuff, they ain't listening right. <laughs> Something wrong. Well, it's just like it's just like that old story about the you know the two guys are out running or out in the woods and they see a bear and the other one stops and he says one guy says what are you doing he says I'm tying my shoes yeah. why you can't outrun that bear I just have to outrun you right so and that's what you have to do in these cases you you've got to just do better <laughs> than everybody else right you know that's the that's the name of the game and and you need to focus yeah. on I, I, you know by the way just one last thing on this linkedin i can't i'm surprised people don't sit there i go through linkedin almost every night i spend time going through it oh man there's somebody i haven't talked to let me send them a note oh there's someone but you know and today i'm i'm capped out i can only take thirty five thousand contacts so now i look through my linkedin to see who i'm tossing out right because they haven't done anything for me or I haven't connected with them in a way that's meaningful. And there's somebody mm -hmm. else out there that's, you know, there's a pony out there. And so I'm lo always looking for the ponies. Yeah. Oh my goodness. You can, can I, one of the strategies that I did, Jeff, um, most people, LinkedIn has this new set in, it's an old feature, but it's new uh, revamped a little bit. It's the celebrations section. So underneath your contacts, it shows celebrations. And what that is, is people that have birthdays, yep. people who have work anniversaries, people who are new to positions. Jeff, I can tell you I've made thousands of dollars from that little thing. It's straight money because all I do, find somebody that, that I, you know, maybe an ideal customer that I have connection with. And I send them a personal, not like, Hey, happy birthday, Jeff. I'll probably sing a song to you, sing a song to you, or just send a video like, you know, Jeffrey, hope you're doing pretty well over C-Suite Network. I just wanted to go ahead and say thanks for coming on the show last year. Uh, congrats on the new acquisition you guys have. Um, you know, look forward to learning more. Or happy birthday to you. You know, but just something a little fun. You're probably going to laugh and smile or whatever at it. But the point is, I just made an impression. You're probably going to say, hey, thanks, DK. And we're going to continue that conversation. What's going on? And I can tell you. But that allows me to open door. And worst case, it allows for me to be able to freshen up my connection rather than just having... Um, I'm connected with Jeffrey. <laughs> I well, hey, DK, if you want to really impress me more, add. yeah, if you really want to impress me more than just singing me happy birthday, send me a bottle of scotch on my birthday. That'd be that's 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 what I love to see. Uh, that <laughs> noted, noted. <laughs> Got to add that information to our network, there, guys. <laughs> Um, Jeff, we're coming up towards the end here, man. If the sales leaders are listening to this, they're trying to change the attitude of their teams. They play a pretty critical role. If you were to give a sales leader an advice on how they can help their sales team change their stinking thinking, what would you tell them? Yeah, right now, first of all, I'd tell you the biggest thing is save the whales. Go after those biggest customers and make sure they're solid and double up, double down on all those extra service that you're giving them. You do not want those big whales walking away. And we all have them. We all have that Pareto principle. 80% of our revenues come from 20% of our client base. Make sure those whales are locked down. You give them love, support. You smother them with hugs and kisses appropriately. And next but not least, I would double down on all the white space and everything else. Because you know if you're providing great service and, and, and uh, products, whatever you might be selling, in providing as a, you know as your business itself then go find that white space go find more just like those whales they're out there 
You just need to be a lot more aggressive about it. So this is the time in which I double down because so many times you got all these other people who are sitting out there, DK, and what do they do? They're sitting out there right now. Oh, woe is me, woe is me, sitting on the couch, eating some bomb bombs, saying about how bad it's going to be. But the real, real players out there, they're going after it and they're making it happen. You know, it's not about survive. You know, when people talked about that during COVID, it's just survive COVID. No, how about thrive and drive? And that's the key that we need to be able to think about. Love it. Um, you, you talk about some of your, your things you guys have, your network and, and whatnot. Um, as a sales leader, um, maybe give me some thoughts. Uh, what are some of the, what, what would you say are some of the reasons I should come over and start listening to some of the content there? I mean, I know it's probably pretty obvious, but um, how, if I'm an executive, why should I be? Oh, it's the C-Suite people? Network? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You get, <laughs> I'm trying to- yeah, well, yeah, the average business podcast, you know, you know so at typically you, you what you typically see for someone who's listening to a podcast that listen to five different shows, eight different episodes. And if you're if you're a podcaster that's out there, you want to be part of a network. You don't want to be out there in what I call podcast purgatory mm -hmm. and being a part of network. Typically, anyone that joins our network, about 40 percent increase across the board. That's what we typically see. Some obviously a lot more than that. I mean, we got people who's down millions of downloads. So it's just a matter of uh, being around other people just like you and that. That's always a good thing to be is go where the business is. You don't have to build it and hope they'll come. You go where to they are. And that's the important thing about a, a network like C-Suite Radio, C-Suite TV, or, you know, a network like C-Suite Network itself is a, a trusted network for people to come together, a little education, motivation, inspiration. Hey, and a chance, in a, a, you know, at monetization, but you got to get engaged. You got to buy, you got to buy the lottery ticket if you want to win. Amen. So some of the sales leaders that are listening to this, they should come over there and listen at least because you have all of these type of content, uh, things that's going to help them and help them to build a business acumen. Got some of the best sales, some of the best sales content in the world, some of the best marketing advice you'll ever see in the world. Yeah. Well, Jeff, if folks want to get in touch with you, stay in touch with you and connect on LinkedIn, I know you're tapped out at 35K. <laughs> What's the best way for them to go about doing so though? Well, they can still follow me anywhere. So that's not a problem. Um, all the social media, reach out to me. I put my email right here on the video, but jeffrey.hazlett, and that's H-A-Y-Z-L-E-T-T -T at c c network.com c network.com Jeffrey, we'll put that information in our show notes so we can go ahead and make sure we connect with you um, again uh, and, and folks can reach out to you. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on our show today. My pleasure. Thank you. Hey, that was Jeff Hazlett. If you really want to go ahead and take those downturns and turn them into an upturn, turn them into a good opportunity to some lemonade right now, please go ahead and connect with Jeff. You can find all of his information on LinkedIn. You can also find him in our show notes because we put all the details there for you as well. Again, this podcast is designed to be two, to do two things. Really, it's to help you not only to increase pipeline, we want to help you to close more deals than you've ever done before. That requires you to take action. So based on the things you've learned today, apply it. You've heard some of our sponsors. They have great tools that can help you not only as an individual contributor, but your organization as a whole. I endorse them and I recommend them because I use them as well. If you find benefit from this podcast, again, share it with one other team member, and we would love for you to come back and listen to more. As always, we want to help you to 3 to 5x your pipeline. We want to help you to double your close rate. Most importantly, we want you to raise your level of thinking and go out and do big things. Thanks so much for watching.